Welcome to Lecture Online. Now in the previous video we showed you that this was not an exact equation and we had to find the integrating factor in order to make it exact so that we could find the solution. Now in the next video we'll show you how to find the solution. In this video we're going to show you how to find an integrating factor. And again remember that the partial of m with respect to y had to equal to the partial of n with respect to x. So in other words, when we take this quantity and we take the partial with respect to y, that should equal this quantity when we take the partial with respect to x. And we already showed you that was not the case. So we knew that we had to multiply times the integrating factor, and we could say that integrating factor f will be something probably in the order of x to the n power times y to the, oop, let me reverse that, x to the m power times y to the n power, like to state in alphabetical order. So we don't know what the exponents of, of x and y will be, but let's say it could be a general f x to the m power, y to the n power. Now there's other integrating factors that will not be in that format, but let's start off with something in that particular format. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that integrating factor. So we're going to multiply the left side and the right side by that integrating factor f, f, so in other words, what we're going to do, we're going to multiply the left side by x to the m power times y to the n power times the quantity xy squared plus 4x squared y uh, times dx plus 3x squared y plus 4x cubed times dy. And of course, the, the right side will still be 0 when we, in, when we multiply it times the integrating factor. So now we're going to multiply this through and see what we get. So here we have x to the m plus 1 power, m plus 1 power, because here we have the exponent m, there we have the exponent 1, we add exponents when the base are the same, times y to the n plus 2, plus here we have 4x to the m plus 2, y to the n plus 1. So this multiplied as this gives us this right here. And we have to take the whole thing and multiply it times dx. Plus, here we multiply. So we have 3x to the m plus 2 power and y to the n plus 1. Plus 4 times. Here we have x to the uh, m plus 3. And then we have y to the n power. And we put parentheses around here, times dy is equal to 0. And so now we have this in the general format where, where we have m times dx plus n times dy is equal to 0. And of course, if this is exact, that means that the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. And that, of course, is if this is an exact equation. Now, by multiplying this times of an arbitrary, what we call integrating factor, we then assume that we made this exact, and so we can now find the correct exponents m and m to make this the correct integrating factor to make this an exact differential equation. So that means that if we take the partial of this with respect to y, it should equal the partial of this with respect to x, and of course, for the appropriate values for m and n. And what we need to do now is find those correct values for m and n to make this the correct integrating factor. Of course, from the previous video, we already know that it was y over x, but we don't know that yet. We have to get there. So we take the partial with respect to y of this first quantity right here, which is x to the m plus 1, y to the n plus 2, plus 4 times x to the m plus 2, y to the n plus 1. All right, now remember, when we take the partial with respect to y, that x becomes a constant, so this here is a constant. So we take the exponent, n plus 2, times the constant, x to the m plus 1, raised uh, times y to the n plus 1. We have to subtract 1 from the exponent, since we took the derivative. And then here again, remember, x is a constant. That would be plus uh, 4 times n plus 1 times x to the m plus 2 times y to the n power because it take 1 away from the exponent. Now we do the same for the second quantity right there. So the partial with respect to x of the quantity 3x to the m plus 2 
times y to the n plus 1 plus 4 times x to the m plus 3, y to the n. Of course, in this case, n is the constant, x is the variable, so this and this remains constant. So we have 3 times the exponent, m plus 2, times x to the 1 less, which is m plus 1, times y to the n plus 1, plus 4 times, oop, now I have to take the derivative, so that would be 4 times m plus 3 times x to the exponent 1 less, m plus 2 times y to the n power. Now, if this is an exact equation, now that we multiply times the integrating factor, then these must be equal to each other. Now notice that this here is x to the n plus 1, y to the n plus 1. This is x to the n plus 1, n to, y to the n plus 1. And then also notice, let me get a different color, that here we have x to the n plus 2, y to the n, x to the n plus 2, y to the n, which means that this has to equal this, and this has to equal this for the two to be equal to one another. So therefore I can conclude that n plus 2 must equal 3 times n plus 2, and we can say that 4 times n plus 1 must equal 4 times n plus 3. So what we have now is we have two equations and two unknowns which we can algebraically solve for m and n to find the correct integrating factor. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's come over here. We have more room and solve for those two variables, n and m, or the two unknowns. So taking the first equation, I can say that n plus 2 is equal to multiplying through 3m plus 6. And the second equation that becomes 4n plus 4 is equal to 4m plus 12. 4m plus 12. All right, let's see here. We need to eliminate one of our variables. So what if I multiply the top by a negative 4? So I'm going to multiply the top by a negative 4. That means I multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4. And that then gives me the following. Minus 4n minus 8 is equal to minus 12m minus 24. Now I can add these two together. Notice that one of my variables will disappear. The n will disappear. So I end up with a minus 4 equals a minus 8m minus 12. Bringing the minus 12 over to the other side, I get um, that would be um, a plus 8 equals a minus 8m. So therefore, m must equal a negative 1. All right, so I already discovered one of my variables. Now I need to discover my other unknown. So I can go ahead and grab maybe this equation right here. So my top equation, so we have n plus 2 equals 3m plus 6. Notice that the m is equal to negative 1. So n plus 2 equals 3 times the negative 1 plus 6. So n is equal to negative 3 plus 6 minus 2. And that means that n is equal to 1. All right, so coming back over here with my integrating factor, which I have the general form right there. So f, which is equal to x to the n, oh, x to the m power, y to the n power, is equal to x to the minus 1 power, y to the positive 1 power, which means my integrating factor is y over x. And that was what we had as an integrating factor in the previous video. I just hadn't shown you yet at that point how to calculate that. So now you see how to find the integrating factor. Once you have the integrating factor, you're going to multiply both the left and the right side of the differential equation by the integrating factor to make the equation exact, and then you can solve the equation using the normal techniques. That I will show you in the next video, that once you find the correct integrating factor, and once you've established that it's the correct integrating factor because it is now exact, then you can go ahead and find the solution. And we'll do that in the next video.